Hey everybody, David here, and this is another product review for the 13th Age Bestiary book. Uh, it is by Pelgrim Press, and the designer is Rob Heinsu. He is also from Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition, and also Ash Law has helped a lot with this book. Now the artists are the same that are in the, the you know that have been uh, doing art in the core book and also the 13 True Ways book, and the artists are Lee Moyer and his minion Aaron McConnell. So, the book itself, as you can see, is a hardback. It is 240 pages. You can get this on the Pelgrane Press website for $39.95, and when you buy it, you get a free PDF. I like that. Uh, we are in the year the digital age where the year is 2016 so all the companies need to get on board like uh, you know Pelgrim Press, Green Ronine, all the other major pump companies need to get on board with that and start putting out PDFs so there we go uh, the book book itself I've had this for about two years now uh, it has not fallen apart like other uh, big name books uh, the quality is of of a top notch quality. You can see that the uh, these are the same high gloss thick weighted paper. Uh, the, the, well, the same thick weighted paper, high gloss. That's in the uh, co other core books, the core rule book, and the also Thirteen True Ways core rule book, which would be core book number two, is what I call it. And you can see the book is just filled with art all the way through and we are going to go ahead and switch over to the digital portion of the review so you guys can see this book uh, in a much uh, nicer present within a much nicer presentation so all right everybody see you in just a second all right everybody i am back so the 13th age beast theory is a great book uh, and you know guys i've been playing Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Star Frontiers, all kinds of games over the last 30 years, since 1984 when I started playing. And this 13th Age Bestiary is probably the best monster slash monster manual slash bestiary I've ever purchased in all of the years gaming. And I'm going to show you every single page in this PDF and you're going to see why that in my opinion, and like I said guys, gals, this is solely just my opinion, uh, but as a dungeon master, I like to see thir certain things in my monster books. And in a lot of the monster books nowadays that are printed, you just don't see this type of content and this type of variety. So I'm going to show you guys why that I think that's 13th Age Bestiary. I believe it won in any as well. Uh, last year or the year before. So this is a really good book. Uh, Rob Heinsu, Jonathan Tweet, Ashlaw, all the guys at Pelgrim Press have done such a great job not only on the Beastiery but on anything that comes out 13th Age is is really awesome and it's and it is actually becoming one of my favorite games. Uh, it really is. I'm I'm actually preferring it over the bigger titles now. So and, and and I like it because they they stay with the same artist as well, Lee Moyer, and also uh, I guess his apprentice, uh, as, as he called him before, Aaron McConnell. So let's go ahead and start taking a look. Uh, you know, basically support. This is all the the testers and I I think the kickstarters that helped with this. Lots of uh, monsters. There's uh, over I believe 60 some varieties of monsters and a total of over 200. So you can see, for example, the drow here. There are there's just not one drow. There are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different drow. So including a named uh, drow there. And, and and I like that kind of stuff, guys. You know, bats for example. There's a swarm of bats, dire bats, cavalry bat, all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, with the other monsters like the the, the chimera, the chimeras, we'll, we'll take a look at those. There's a lot of iconic stuff that goes along with the chimera. The 13 icons, you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, the basilisk, for example, example they go into the different colors and all kinds of different effects for the different colors. So there's so much, there's not only you know the different types of creatures and the different types you know of choles or uh, coattles but there's also a lot of other variety and nastier specials that you can use and, and it's just a great book and 
you'll see uh, as we get past this introduction here uh, that it gives you a format that each monster follows. Lore, the stats for the monsters themselves, and then it goes into other things after that. Building battles with this particular creature, you know, how the icons are influenced with each one of these single cre you know, each one of these icons are influenced this way. Uh, you know, like I said, there's treasure, there's all kinds of curse stuff, there are just random ability tables that you, I mean, they've put so much work into this, and you can tell. So, it's just not one boring, low-level kobold. It's just not like that in this book, and, and uh, you'll see why. So, it gives you a, a, like, monster list of, you know, monsters that might negotiate or invoke a, a treaty. So, it gives you the Drow, Lich, uh, the Manicor, the Lamasu, the Blue Sorcerer, you know, monsters that might take you for ransom, and it lists more. And then there's all kinds of different things that, you know, more ideas that they give you to create, use these monsters in this book to put hook points or give you ideas for, camp, you know, campaign ideas, basically. And I, I think it's great. The more ideas, the better. And I, and I love that. I, I just I just love it when you have all the all these resources and tools in front of you. And, you know, Dungeon Masters love to create their own content, and, and I do as well. But when I have stuff like this, one all, there's always a saying that I like to go by. More than one mind is always better than one. And when you have the minds of these publishers giving you these ideas, and then you have your ideas, then you kind of mingle these things together, and then the, the possibilities are endless. And that's that's what I love about it. All right, so then there's all kinds of ways to build battles, you know, unique battles, all that good stuff. And there's all kinds of information that they, you know, show you. So the Basilisk. Talks about the lore of the Basilisk, uh, starting, you know, lore about the Basilisk. And, and, and you know, the, the Basilisk is three pages, basically. And you'll see that there's a Basilisk here, one base stat. All right, now that they have the one base core group of stats, then they have the different colors of basilisk. Green, red, black, white. Then you get now you got four basilisk with all the different uh, you know special attacks and special abilities that these colored basilisk have. And then you go on to the next page. Then there's uh, like these little side notes that are even nastier specials for legendary changers. So not only do you have the nastier special here, which is Death Breath, imagine what that is, then there's even nastier specials. All right, Look at me, Lingering Look, and If Looks Could Kill. I love the names that they come up with these two. It tells you how to build battles with Basilisk, you know, avoid seeing the Basilisk, different ways that you can kind of give your uh, party members' ideas to not look at them, maybe, or maybe ways that you can come up with mirrors and stuff and putting them in into your your you know your dungeons or maybe a, a maze or a hedge maze or something. So, uh, basilisk and the icons, how they the re, you know each icon views the basilisk, things found in the basilisk territory. Basilisk environmental effect, poison terrain. Here's all kinds of different terrains, depending on what color basilisk. And then here are adventure hooks. And every one of these monsters follows the same format. Uh, the one thing is, I'm especially with my all my manager manager experience that I've had, I don't like to see blank pages. And I have no no problems at all with this book. Like I said, guys. This is probably the best bestiary I've ever purchased in 30 years of role-playing games. But, you know, it would have been nice to maybe have another piece of art here. I know it would have taken a long time to commission it, you know, get it to fit. Or maybe they just could have made another basilisk. But I just hate to see blank, uh, blank space on, you know, in a book. But you don't see it too often. But that's the only super, super minor, minor, minor gripe that I have about the book. Everything else is just beautiful. It's brutal. Alright, so here's the bat. 
You got just the bats, lore about the bats, all kinds of bat abilities, random bat abilities, swarm of bats, dire bat, bat galvery, and they're all different level ranges. It's just not the same boring bat. Here's thunder bats, wraith bats, building battles with bats, bats related to the icons. Perfect. Three pages of bat information, and you got a bunch of bats. And random bat abilities. It's great. Black dragon. Not only is it a black dragon, but there's black dragon abilities, and then there's the dragons themselves. So it's a black catacomb dragon, a black gorge dragon, void dragon, imperium dragon, and I mean the art is just beautiful. Lee and his minion has done, so, and I hate to call him his minion. I'm sorry, Aaron, but I, I saw that uh, wrote somewhere. So, and uh, or his apprentice, and you guys have done such an amazing job. And it's the art is so consistent, and I and I love that. If I was to ever make a game, I would do the same thing as what Thirteenth Age is, and I've actually mentioned this. You got to have the same artist, same cartographers. I I just I'm I'm a big advocate of that. So here's a blue sorcerer, beautiful art once again, all kinds of nastier specials, you know, spells on this guy building battles and you can see you know here's the same format building battles blue sorcerers and the icons and then there's also other special things that they add in too how to name you'll see that all throughout the book names that they can use uh, things blue sorcerers carry all kinds of items that you can give your party and then here's adventure work adventurers hooks and then more blank space <sighs> a little bit more stuff maybe maybe a little bit more on things they carry maybe a couple more adventure hooks but i hate that blank space but like i said it's, it's just a, a minor gripe i love their representation lee great job on these bugbears man i love these bugbears it's probably the best bugbears i've ever seen for art they are awesome and you got multiple different uh, bugbears building battles bugbears and the icons names and adventure hooks and more blank space the bullet or boule any way you say it is correct I've looked it up I've done my research on it bullet or boule it doesn't matter so let the uh, stop the fighting with the bullet or boule I, I get tired of seeing the debate in chat either or is correct guys <laughs> all kinds of uh, boules adventure hooks great can be an assassin all kinds of good stuff. And then it gives you like a table of random demon abilities. I like it. Icons, names, adventure hooks, centaurs. I love the art here too. Lore, all kinds of centaurs, even an undead centaur, centaur champion, how they're related to the, uh, all the icons, adventure hooks, names, chaos beast. The Chimeras. Now, the Chimeras are unique. I love the mechanic that they put in here with the uh, Chimerical Change. I think it's called Chimerical Change. It is, yeah, right there. See below. Now, what the Chimerical Change is, at the start of the battle, you have the PCs roll their Icon Relationship die. And you can actually have them have a... Uh, you can actually get them to have a benefit or a flaw, depending on what they roll so they could actually get a benefit and they're all with the 13 icons so the chimeras are affected by all of the icons it looks like so before the battle you have them do their roles they're going to have no clue why you're having them roll don't tell them and then they'll get benefits or they could have flaws i, I love it it's it's so good all kinds of you know building battles adventure hooks Chols, and then the Chols are awesome too. Not only are there, you know, a bunch of different Chols and tells you, you know, about the icons and the Chols, but then it goes into uh, symbiote magic items that actually start turning you into a crustacean. And there's literally a page and a half of these. And you can see she's got like a claw armor that's just growing on her. I mean, I like this kind of stuff. And I actually have a pretty good adventure that I'll probably, when I start my campaign off, I'll probably start it off with Chols. I, I definitely probably will. And look at that. All that information on all these symbiotic types of items. You know, and it tells you a helm, heavy armor, and then there's all kinds of bonuses and all the effects and the different tiers, adventurer, champion, and epic. Man, they go into such great detail. 
and then you know here's a, a cholo slave and then adventure hook adventure hooks there's a cool man look at that art it's great and it's exciting to look through this book every time i can look through this book multiple times a day and just not get bored of looking through it I love it. You know, like the like the attacks. Certain things can happen on a 16-plus roll, on an even roll, on an odd roll. You know, monsters can affect the escalation die. These these are creatures that are, are really well put together. And here's uh, several of the uh, coattles. And then all kinds of uh, icon abilities that you can also add. So if, you know, you're dealing with, you know, this is influenced by the Archmage, then you would take, you know, this close range attack here called striking comets and you would put it on a level 8 coatl or here's the level 11 version so it gives you all kinds of variety and i love that a lot of books guys just don't do this they don't put the time and effort into a bestiary you'll just get kobold that's it or a wing kobold or you'll get just a dragon not like a like a black dragon. You won't get five different types of black dragons like we what we looked at. And then random dragon abilities. And then if you want to use those abilities, much like anything else, you can just plug and play it on any, you know, just like, just like a computer part. Plug and play it on any monster that you want. Change the name of, of the actual ability and bam, there you go. Piece of cake. Drow. I love the drow art. I love all the art, but the drow art is really good. And here's all kinds of different drow. Spider Mage, Drow Soldier, Sword Maiden, Spider Sorcerers, Dark Bolt, Calvary, a Spider Mounted Drow, all kinds of nastier specials, all kinds of potions, poisons, and substances that the drow would have on them. And you can make these items that uh, not only they're affected, you know, they are affected or infected by the drow. You can make them have the, uh, maybe a couple of these poisoned apples on them. You find them. Or, you, f you know, you find these uh, f couple bottles of uh, poison. I mean, that's all kinds of great stuff. Weaver Swarm, Lacris, all kinds of, you know, the drow, uh, the icons, how to name them. Now, here's another good little uh, side note that I like here. Is it drow or dro? Well, Drow comes from the Arcadian Scottish tro, rhymes with cow, so it would be drow, not with toe. So it's not dro, it's drow. There you go. In 13th age, it's not dro, it's drow. It's it, you know, it's it's just like the boule bullet uh, debate. Drow dro, there's no debate in 13th age. It is drow. There you go. They even say it. <sighs> things draw carry all kinds of adventure hooks the dibbuk all kinds of adventure hooks optional you know possession type of uh things that could happen elder beast kind of we've got a lot to get edder caps i love the edder caps i love how they're depicted the frost giants, not only frost giants, but they give you like a, uh, like an auroch, they give you a, a winter beast, they give you like an ice zombie, all kinds of variety. Here's all kinds of like special terrain with the frost giants, set at different DCs and you know level ranges for the different tiers and the damages and the saving throws. It's great. But look at the art on those giants too. It's really nice. Here's the the fungaloids. All kinds of fungaloids. And here's another race, the uh, Twigzog. I think this is the only uh, playable race that they added. And I, th I think that uh, Jonathan mentioned... Yeah, Rob mentioned that Jonathan and I were not planning to put races into monster books. Uh, and he didn't know that he would have imagined that we would start with a fungaloid. It's good to be surprised. So... There you go, DMs and players. If you want to play one of these Twig Zogs, there you go. Plus two strength or plus two con. And you, here's your uh, your racial power called Fungal Biology. And then you can put a champion feat, a couple different champion feats into it. And then here's the Fungal, com uh, fungal Companion talent too. There you go. Here's Cubes. Affected by the icons, the genies. Great art here. 
talks about wishes, the jinns, the afrites, with the icons, ghouls, all kinds of different. Uh, there's a licklash. Oh, this is a good one here. The ghoul pus buster. I love it, and it has a close attack that affects 1d3 creatures called Vomit Comet. I love it. Great. Nastier specials, uh, ghouls and the icons, infections and diseases, dealing with a ghoul bite, uh, terrible places for ghoul outbreaks, disease outbreaks, adventure hooks. Great stuff. Golems, even a clock, like a giant clockwork, mechanical. Here's hags. A lot of, lot of special things with the hags. So many hag abilities. You get to choose two, and there's literally two pages of hag abilities that you can choose to put on your hag. Hell, if you want to, there's no rule saying you can't do more than two. You could, you could have every single one of these abilities if you want to. But it's just the effort that they put into this. And then here's all kinds of death curses. They get to choose one death curse out of, like, 15. So here's how you name them, things they carry, adventure hooks, hags and the icons, how to build battles with them. Here's haunted skulls. And like I said, every one of these creatures has nastier specials, which normally you wouldn't add in, but, I mean, if you're wanting to be ruthless to your players, you could. You could definitely do that. And all, like I said, a lot of these monsters have mechanics where there's, like, the black skull, for instance, natural even hit, the target is stuck until save ends. And then there's, you know, all kinds of natural odd hits, or if you miss with an even, or uh, or hit with an odd. I mean, there's all kinds of things. They affect the escalation die. You can reset it with some of them. All kinds of good stuff. All kinds of uh, adventure hooks for the skulls. Here's hell bugs. All kinds of different hell bugs. Big blank space there. Intellect devourer. Like I said, it's a minor thing, guys. I mean, this this book is beautiful, as you can see. I mean, it really is. Adventure Hooks, that's for the uh, Intellect Devourer. All kinds of good information. Quite a few Devourers. Here's the uh, the Jorogumu. I think it's the Jorogumu. I hope it's pronounced right. If not, I'm sure some uh, naming Nazi will uh, alert me on YouTube. So, there you go. <laughs> Adventure Hooks, the Icons, Kobolds. Bite-sized fun, guys. They say kobolds are bite-sized fun. And they do a lot of cool stuff with the kobolds. And there's a lot of kobolds. And in last month's monthly subscription, they gave you even more kobolds that are different from these. Kobold Dog Rider, Engineer, Skyclaw, uh, Brave Skill, Dungeon Shaman, Shadow Warrior, Dragon Soul, Building Battles with Kobolds, everything. What they carry... All kind, and I really like what they did here because we all know that kobolds love to trap their entire home. And it has all these different traps, and it talks about how they are trapsters. And, you know, all kinds of things that they carry, like blast powder, smoke eggs, viceroy glue, how all these traps can do ongoing damage, conditions, and then here's all kinds of locations of where they would hide their traps. There's like 25 or 30 different areas. And then it gives you, you know, all of the information of, you know, what to do with the traps. And then you would just take the level range and plug it into the chart that you get in the uh, the core book for the DC and the damage, and you're set. Piece of cake. And then here's uh, more, st more terrain stuff for, like, tunnels and, and uh, you know, mountainsides and stuff. Lamassus. The Lich. I like the Lich because there's two Lich. There's two Lich. There's a Lich Count, which is the male, and then the Lich Baroness. I love it. And then there's the Lich Prince, which I guess uh, would be the child. And then there's all kinds of things with building battles, Lich and the Icons, Adventure Hooks, all that good stuff. I and mean, more blank space. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I won't say that anymore. There's the, the Manticore, all kinds of different Manticores, even a Manticore Bard. The Naga, the Sway Song Naga, Spark Skill, Mana Fang, just all kinds of Naga. All kinds of nastier specials, the Nagas and the Icon. Uh, about the uh, the Island of Omen, how they are uh, one of the original uh, 
basically the the original uh serpents that were actually on omen and i used that for one of my adventures that i created for the dragon empire and wrote and i used all this information which is really good all kinds of more adventure hooks i love their representation of ogres all kinds of different ogres in here the ogre magi notice that they don't call me ani i think uh wizards has a probably a copyright on that so there's all kinds of onis well ogre mag over ogre magis all kinds of different you know infi environmental effects that these ogre magi would change all kinds of things about what you would you know the gems that they carry and stuff with the icons the names adventure hooks i like how they change the representation of the orc the lore with the orcs all the different orcs are in this book. The Battle Screamer is really cool because they use instruments and then they attack with their instruments. It's really cool. And then here's all kinds of diseases and scourges with the orcs as well. Icons, all that good stuff. Predatory plants, all kinds of man-eating, flesh-eating plants, adventure hooks. Purple Worm, one of my favorite monsters in all of uh, uh, tabletop game lore. Love ta I love purple worms, red dragons, volcano dragon, horde song dragon, great horde elder, flame wreath dragon, and the art is just amazing, guys. I mean, look at that. I mean, that is just freaking swing, man. <laughs> I get so excited over art, man. Here's a nice little rub caps. These these are uh, sadistic little creeps they call them. And then here's the sloth, uh, sloth cap, the red cap, the crimson cap, and, you know, all the other hooks and everything else. Remoraz, or Remoraz. Rust monsters are fierce in this game. If you attack over 16 or higher, which is the resist threshold, you break the armor. It just pff, rust pff, right off the player. I mean, rust monsters are... They're old school. These things are like classic and first edition AD&D hardcore. I, I love these rust monsters. There's a rust monster. There's an obliterator. All kinds of random demon abilities that you can put onto them. Uh, all kinds of items that you can find inside of them. The Sahawagans. I think there was a big debate. I think they went into... Uh, I think Jonathan and Jonathan Tweet and Rob Hines who were debating on you know how Sahawagan originated so they just I guess they just talked about both ways which was uh, pretty cool and then there's all kinds of different Sahawagan in here uh, Shadow Dragon this is actually a really really nice dragon here there's a Shadow Thief Dragon talked about you know how they're how they uh, how they can curse and hex and you know all kinds of true magic items that they would have there's all kinds of cursed items that they, there's like two pages of cursed items and magic items so there's even more that you can put into your games really good sturges not just one boring little you know challenge rating one one hundredth sturge there's you know sturges from level one to level two it looks like and uh, there's a lot of nastier specials that you can do with these Sturge that would really torment some level 1 and 2 characters. All kinds of terrain effects. You, it talks about how you can build a hive with your Sturges and then have all these environmental effects inside of the hive. Like slippery and you know wet uh, terrain where they'll be slipping all over the place. Goop and gop you know, everywhere. It's it's really good. It's awesome. Just not a, your boring old surges. Tarask, everybody's favorite, you know, tabletop game Godzilla monster. You know, it is the Godzilla of tabletops, the Tarask, and it's probably the most deadly creature in the uh, one of the most deadly creatures in the in the uh, beast area, as it should be. Creature of legend, all kinds of nasty specials and then there's nastier specials with regeneration at 230 hit points around 2100 hit points 31 armor class 29 physical defense 25 magical defense crazy trask and the icons adventure hooks 
the name look what it says for names the Tarask is unique its name is the Tarask I love it great I love how they have a sense of humor in this thing too in this game how they talk about min maxers were if you're going to try to min max in this game we hope that you get attacked by a swarm of mosquitoes when you leave your house or something that's pretty funny the saved war banners now this is interesting you don't see this very often in games and this is another uh, ingenious thing that they've put in you know you can have you know your battle flag be enchanted and it can actually attack and you know act like an, a commander or something here's all kinds of different banners banners that can attack you and then there's banners that are associated with the orc lord the lich king i like it now these are these this would be really good to put in uh, to a game too all kinds of hooks so here's uh wendigos everybody loves wendigos Whispering Prophet with the icons, the adventure hooks. The White Dragon, here's all the different uh, White Dragon Hatchling, a Cenotaph Dragon, a Mausoleum Dragon, Blizzard Dragon, Moon Dragon, Building Battles, Dragons and the Icons, uh, Lunar Cycle, Adventure Hooks, Wibbles, these are cute. These are little first level mooks. I guess it would probably be like the flumps, maybe in D and D, but wibbles are wibbles are pretty cool. Now the zorigami, this this is awesome. These are all like clockwork and constructs and stuff, and there are quite a few of these, and I, I really like the art of these. Here's the apex uh, zorigami, and then the there you know talks about the clockwork and stuff. So those are pretty much all of the the monsters, and there's like I said, there's over 200. Now, here's monster creation. This touches on what was in the core book. Now, it shows you how to reskin an existing monster, how to tweak an existing monster up to about six levels higher, and anything after that, they really require, they just recommend that you build something, uh, in, you know. So, here's this fire monkey that they transformed into a fire gorilla, you know, or... It, and then here's the creating monsters from scratch that basically just touch on everything else and that's pretty much it you know just it just goes more into just pages of you know helping you create creatures and stuff because they want you to create them and then here's an appendix with the uh, all of the random de uh, demon abilities d up to d8 random dragon abilities d12 and random dire abilities to d6 and then it has the uh, unified monster list by level and role and I love how they do levels and not just uh, you know especially in 3, 5 and 5 with the challenge rating I, I, I like levels better that's just my opinion building battles very easy you know same level you're you know if you want a champion battle one level higher epic battle you know two levels higher it's super easy i mean it's, there's no getting your you know oval teen decoder out and trying to decode all this crap from you know this range of hit points of 12 to 37 to you know this armor class from 22 to 23 it just gives you all the numbers that you need right there and that's all in the core book so there you go everybody that is the 13th age bestiary and you can see guys why i like this book so much it has all kinds of information for you for every single creature listed you know hook points how they're related to the icons magic items things that they would carry little crazy items you know poisons maybe a, a, a you know there's like a bone key made out of like a rat rat leg or something I and mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that they think of and put in there i like it lots of variety lots of different bats lots of dragons lots of drow not just one type you know just not one creature i like it guys give it a try so i hope you guys enjoyed it i've been going on for 34 minutes i hope you guys uh leave a comment down below feel free to like the video share the video also subscribe to the youtube channel if you haven't done so what are you what are you waiting for? So, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.